Hello, welcome back. Uh, so here's uh, just another exercise looking at sample selection. Uh, so we've got a population that contains just five elements in it. Uh, number of children, although actually we're not going to use that information in this question. Uh, we're just going to look at um, the number of different samples that we can get out of, out of this this population, either part A, samples of size 2, part B, samples of size 4, and then we'll look at these um, probabilities that correspond to each of these. So for the first one, all possible samples of n equals 2, it's helpful to know uh, how many samples you're, you're, are, are available. So here we need to figure out how many combinations of, of 2. So if I have 5 elements in that population, I'm going to choose 2. 5 minus 2 factorial. So you may remember this formula. This is from our our discussion on combinations and permutations. So here we're looking at combinations because uh, order doesn't uh, order doesn't matter. For example, if I have one sample that contains elements A and B, that's the same sample uh, as B and A. So order doesn't matter here. Uh, so we're looking at combinations. Uh, and so for this one, if I have um, 5 factorial divided by choose 2 factorial times uh, 3 factorial. So I should have 10, 10 possible combinations of two elements in this data set. So if I just write them down, A, B, A, C, A, D, A, and E. So those are all of the possible combinations that contain A. And then finally, B, C, B, D, and B, E, those are all of the ones that contain B. And next we have C and D, C and E, and finally D and E. So that should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there's our 10 different combinations of two elements out of a population of, of 5. Now the next one, uh, possible samples of n equals 4. So we'll use a similar kind of process. Uh, I'm going to start off with A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and E. Uh, next one will be A, B, D, and E. Uh, A, C, D, and E. And finally, the last one will be B, C, D, and E. So here I have five different um, different samples of size 4 and we can verify that, that's, that there aren't any other missing if we're not sure. This would be 5 factorial over 4 factorial uh, times 5 minus 4 factorial and so if we just want to make sure that we've got all of them we can check here 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial and we should get 5. I didn't do this 5 minus 1 because of course that's just going to be 1, so it's not going to change anything. So here I should have 5, and that's how many I've found. Uh, so we're good. We've got all of them. So part C. Uh, use a simple random sampling. Using simple random sampling, what's the probability that each of the n equals 2 samples is selected? So for, th for these first ones here, uh, I have uh, ten, 10 possible uh, samples and each one of them can be drawn at random. They're all equal probability that any one of those uh, samples of size 2 will be drawn. So my probability here is simply 1 tenth. And there's a 1 in, ten, 1 in 10 chance that any one of these samples of size 2 uh, will be drawn from that population of, of 5 elements. So here this is uh, 1 tenth. Uh, for the part D, using the simple random sampling, what's the probability that each of the n equals four samples? So here we have uh, we have five five possible samples that can come out of there. Samples of size four from the population of size five, and they all equal probability. So we have uh, probability then of one fifth for each of those five samples of size 4 uh, from, from this uh, population of size 5. So hopefully that was uh, relatively straightforward. It's, you know, as much as the, neither of these problems uh, required this, this calculation, having that formula in your back pocket uh, can 
it can be helpful. I mean, it's not necessary, but it at least gives you that number that you know when you've got all of the possible um, samples. Because if you've got more elements in that population, if we're looking at n equals three and n equals five, or you know what have you, um, it, it can be helpful just to know what is your target number of of possible samples that you might get. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Um, unless of course the question is specifically asking you to do it but here we're good okay so hopefully that was helpful thank you so much for watching bye bye